The Leo King will be live shortly. Please hold on while the collective consciousness loads. And thank you for being a part of the Leo Kingdom. What is going on, everybody? It is David Palmer, The Leo King. We are live here in the Leo King studios, and it's October 17th of 2017. Thanks so much for being here, and thanks for being live here uh, on the Leo King Network on my live Facebook. Oh, trying to oh, get myself live here so we can be in the chat room with everyone. So give me a second here. And I'm super excited to be here today, you know? Um, there's a lot to talk about in the astrology. I think a lot of people are excited about what this uh, new moon's going to be about. There's a bunch of aspects happening this week. Um, and, you know, it's interesting, some of the things that are playing out in the world stage and how are they connected to this new moon, how are they connected to a lot of the Mars-Venus stuff that we've been seeing. I want to talk about that today. Uh, but, you know, we are definitely... Uh, I'm sure you can feel it change is the name of the game right now in a big way and our lives are going through powerful changes and you know it's just another story changing and it seems like that's the whole part of life life you can always count on change but during this moment you know um I, i've called this moment between october 10th to december 19th which is this very weird window and portal here opening up it's a major moment for us to make some very powerful changes in our life. So I'm super excited uh, to be talking about that today with you all. If you've never been here live with me before, you can actually be here in the chat. So I am looking at the chat, seeing what's everybody doing. I always appreciate when you share the videos and get as many people as we can here in the room because it's always much more fun. But astrology-wise, new moon coming here in Libra, big opposition to Uranus. I know, it's a, it's a weird planet. If you don't know nothing about astrology, we are literally having one of the most rare new moons that you can have, or I guess you could say odd new moons that you could have. So um, there is a little bit of oddity in the air, a little bit of uh, weirdness, but there's also so much about the future that is coming up because Uranus is the planet of the future. So I really want to talk about that future aspect very intensely. And I, and I think that it's going to be very fun to kind of see on how there is this big aspect of the future happening right now. Um, so why don't we just do this and we look at the chart and we see what's going on. So this new moon that we're going to actually talking about is happening on Thursday, October 19th, around 12, 11 p.m. Pacific, 3, 11 p.m. Eastern time, okay? Now, this new moon is very weird because one, let's take a look at it by itself. The sun is already at its fall position. What does that mean? Well, the sun is at its weakest position because think about the zodiac. The zodiac starts at Aries and then for six months, the sun travels until it reaches the fall, right? Literally the fall and September 23rd. And this next six months is about the sun's dying energy until, of course, in Capricorn, where it will rise again and come exalted where it's at its strongest position of moving six months forward again on March 20th. So, you know, a new moon already is not the most strongest sun placement in Libra because Unfortunately, the sun is at its fall position, and this sun is in a nasty battle with the planet Uranus, which Uranus is an Aries, a very strong masculine sign, and in the sign that the sun would rather be in, okay? So I want to make people remind this, that this opposition going on with the sun and Uranus is, I don't want to say that it's not easy, but there's a little jealousy uh, of the sun, which means, one, you know, th that, that extra courage and that momentum to get things done and to make things move forward and to move forward into the future is there because of this Uranus and um, Aries. It's like wanting to go into the future. It's wanting to do it. Remember, Uranus is in retrograde as well, which means it's covering a lot about where our lives were for most of this year um, and the ideas that we had and, and where we could go from here. And there's a lot of excitement building up with the sun looking at it, the only problem is Libra energy in the sun at its fall position is hard because 
it it literally is it 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 weighs out a lot. It it worries. Can this happen? Is this literally right or not right? Is it wrong? You know, judgment is a part, and not in a bad way. Um, judgment comes with Libra. Judgment of whether it's right or wrong. Is it should you do this or not? And it's an interesting moment that it's putting us in a major conflict with our future of our own things that we are weighing out of our own things that we're questioning so much. So there's a lot of those questions that are up on the table. Like, should I do this to move forward in my future? Well, part of it is Aries, which is going to require some sort of action, strength, courage in order to do it. So there's a lot that's coming up that's saying you got to face your fear. And I think that it's not oogie boogie, you know, like scary ghost fears. Although what's ironic about this new moon is it's happening at the exact same time that Mercury and Jupiter just did their conjunction here in Scorpio. And we have just come into the Scorpionic energy with Jupiter. So sure, this could be bringing up past fears that you went through from 2012, especially October of 2012, through August of 2015, because this is exactly where Saturn was during that time. And Jupiter is kind of bringing up the past, old skeletons, old bones, but they're not going to do anything. So it's almost like going through a, an old tattered war field um, and having kind of, I don't want to call, I, I hate using uh, the, the, the term PTSD, but it, it, it kind of brings up... Um, I don't know. I guess the best way I could describe it is kind of like you're going through old fears and weird things that are going on that just might not seem right or not might be going right. And so it's a little funny because I don't know here at my studio across the street, somebody's doing a chainsaw or something outside. So it's kind of like a little bit of <laughs> that movie. I forgot uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, you know, imagine the Texas Chainsaw Massacre happening in those years that happen and walking through the house again. Or, you know, the whole scary part of a haunted house is not the fact that something's going to happen to you. Look, and it's even getting louder. I think this is hilarious. Um, is the fact that it happens and the fear that it could happen or the fear and the eeriness of that it's happening, you know? So, you know, whenever you go to like, uh, like if you got to clean up a bunch of dead bodies, I'm getting all scorpionic because there's so much Scorpio going on in the Zodiac right now, you know, especially like, let's say in the Civil War, right? You know, it, it, this is where Jupiter is going through right now, okay? All of the fears, the craziness that we just tried to survive through of 2012 through 2015, Jupiter is going through to try and understand what happened, understand how to not make this happen again, and positively clear this energy out. So the best way that I could describe this new moon is, number one, don't be afraid of moving into the future that you want. Two, realize that I guarantee you since October 10th, there might have been some sort of really weird new feeling that came inside, definitely bringing back eerie feelings of the time period that Saturn was there of October of 2012 through August of 2015. Things in the body, things in the mind, things in the emotional world. But if you notice with it, and if you notice with what's going on, it's not fully taking you there in a way to where you're actually feeling like you're in the battle again. It's almost like you're walking through what was there and reliving the feelings, but fully not actually reliving it. I can't describe it any better. You're almost like going through a metaphysical transformation. And that's what Scorpio is all about, is this transformational regeneration you know, of self. And with Jupiter, it's trying to bring positive light to these kind of harsh grounds in which we were at. Yeah, you know, one thing is, is I think a lot of us subconsciously, when we went through so much traumatic stress and strain on our lives over these years, and even into 2016 a little, but I would, I would go back towards more towards 2015, 2014. 
Um, those were the peak years of the Pluto-Uranus square and uh, with Saturn in Scorpio and with the eclipses in Scorpio and with the North Node in Scorpio, that uh, there's this really weird element to think about. Um, even though we were going through so much, it's almost like we just did everything we could to like get out. So the second Saturn went into Sag, finally, officially, and was stuck there, and we're not going back into Scorpio in August of 2015. It was like, I'm out of here. I don't want to ever go back there. Well, I think that there's this kind of gnarly element that's reminding us of, hey, maybe I do want to clean it up. You know, sometimes we leave an apartment, a house, and we, we go, I just want to move, and I want to get out of there. But, you know, you get charged a lot if you don't clean it up right, you know? Or sometimes it's good to do some sort of... Uh, you know, like I like to sage my house before I leave if I move or when I enter into a new house, I sage it. This, Jupiter and Scorpio is saging a lot of the issues we had and healing a lot of the past shitty situations we went through back then. And it's interesting that at this new moon, it's highlighting it so much because of the fact that we do have. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on once again. Let's go back. Okay. It's highlighting it so much because of the fact on this new moon, we do have Mercury on top of Jupiter. We're trying to understand it so much. And we're trying to understand the future a lot. If you think about it, Uranus, right, is all about the future. And so is, it's one of its best friends, Jupiter, right? Let's, let's get this out of here. So Jupiter, which is about the future. Uh-oh. We're back. So, um, right? So when you have these elements really highlighting the future so much and highlighting the progressive aspect in our life of what's next, what's coming up next, where are we going to go next, the excitement, and it's exactly at the same time you got to remember that this new moon is somewhat sextiling Saturn which Saturn is in a Jupiter-ruled sign. So you want to look at Jupiter, and Jupiter's in Scorpio. It's trying to clear these old fields, clear these old fears, clear all this stuff. A big new moon opposing Uranus is a big fear fest that we're overcoming, and Uranus is about rising above or rising out of through, you know, the best way I've always described it is like, like literally... just like overcoming the issue by just being higher than it, you know, like coming from a higher place, not stooping down to the level in which the negativity or the darkness is, but rising above it. it it's the heavens. Uranus rules the air. It rules the skies. So this is forcing us to, to raise our own skies and raise up our courage in ways we, you know, I, I think we have before, in, in harder ways, but it's, it's kind of like asking for us in order to move into the future. It's reminding us of those skills we learned in the last five years about how to keep moving forward, how to progress forward, how to deal with fear, how to deal with anxieties, how to deal with things that we're unsure about in our future and not let them affect us. I think this new moon is really about that. There's too much Libra that's that's willing to, in, in, a, in a positive way, find peace. In a negative way, they'll go, oh, you know, because the sun is at fall position here and it's a new moon here. It's, the moon's looking for this exciting new relief, but the sun's not at its strength. It's at its weakest point. So the sun can't illuminate the moon as strong as it can. And a lot of it is our self-judgment or, or, you know, I always, I hate the word or I hate to even use assumption, but we can assume the worst when really it's the best right now. And I think that this is a very important time to not get caught up in assuming the worst about situations in life because one, we have to rise above it. Two, it is Mercury, Jupiter. We have to be positive. We have to be open. We need to be honest. Of course, it's Scorpio. So I'm not saying like, don't believe that you're going to like get the golden ticket and enter into Willy Wonka land, you know, if there's only one ticket out of five billion or something. But there's many other awesome things that you can win at or do great at in your life. And I think that we need to stay positive and not be afraid of holding back. Um, because I think that this is a major last window 
of not holding back. If you think about it astrologically, right, this is Saturn in Sagittarius. And, and this is a Jupiter-ruled sign that Sagittarius is, right? Okay, and so this is where Saturn is. The new moon is sextiling it. At this moment, Mars is at 28 degrees of Virgo. So what's interesting to me about this aspect is Mars is getting ready to come to its detriment, right? Mars in Libra is also the second weakest place. The first weakest for Mars is Cancer. Second weakest is Libra. So not only is the sun at fall, but Mars is going to enter into Libra at the exact moment the sun is getting out and coming into Scorpio, which I think is kind of ironic. There's this aspect going on where, you know what? There's these major decisions we're making in ourselves during this new moon about what we're going to do, committing to it, not being afraid of it, and going for it because the windows are going to close soon. Mars entering into Libra, I hate to be honest, is not a very strong aspect. It weighs it out too long. It tries to negotiate too much. It, 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 it's, it's not a very powerful alignment. Two, I feel like with the sun approaching Jupiter, you can feel right now a major doorway opening in your life. And it's time to take it, not be afraid of it. Because when Saturn comes into score or Saturn, or Saturn comes into Capricorn near the end of this year in December 19th, and we lose a lot of this Jupiter ruled aspect, and Jupiter's now in Scorpio, Saturn's in Capricorn. These are not very door opening aspects. These are already things that you've committed to, doors that have already opened, things that you've already done, and moving those things forward. They're not, you know opening doors into places that you have never been before or, or things like that. Like this is really about moving yourself into things right now that maybe you never have or that you have some sort of will to do. You know, this big Uranus opposition is about the will to move forward. And into newness. But if you're hanging because of a relationship, Libra, oh, I can't do into the new life I want. I'm still hanging on to this partnership that isn't even working out anyway. Jupiter and Scorpio and Mercury is there saying, fuck, the, here's the truth. Mer you cannot get more truthful with Mercury and Jupiter in Scorpio as far as the raw, harsh truth. And especially dealing in partnerships, relationship energies that you know aren't working or whatever. So that's one aspect to look at. Two, your own self-judgments about the situation. Oh no, maybe this isn't right. It doesn't look good or whatever. It doesn't seem right. Like your intuition knows you can pull it off. Okay? Jupiter is in a good spot right now. It's finally, it was in a hellhole. It was in Libra where it went through Pluto Uranus Square, where it went through um, massive aspects that were not easy for it. What I also think is interesting is like the universe is in a place for like, let's move on. Saturn just trying the North Node in the last three weeks, right? And now that that's over, it's like move on time, folks. Like this is not hang around, sit around and hope that something happens in our life. This is grab your life and do something about it and get out of what you're weighing on, get out of situations and especially maybe relationships that are holding you back. Like... You know, and these aren't just romantic. These are ones where it's like this relationship in my life, this friendship, this business partnership, this situation that I'm afraid of going into a better place of, but I don't want to do it because of this person or this thing. This is where that stuff comes up. Jupiter and Mercury being extremely honest, conjuncting in Jupiter, trying to show you the future. This is like huge glimpses into the future right now. Like you can literally be like, oh my God, I'm looking into the future. Like, extremely why wait i mean mars is coming to the critical degree on this new moon of 29 degrees it's almost there to 28 but this is saying change your life change your life this these aspects this new moon is about and what is your honest change Change in a way that changes it completely into a new dimension. Think of life like gears on a clock or in a gear in life, right? 
Uranus says, let's move the gears in a whole different way. So it could feel like you're moving your whole life into different aspects, but you know what? It's time so you can receive more. Jupiter in Scorpio is the ultimate lesson of receiving more in your life. But in the current position you're in with Jupiter, you can't receive more. You've maxed out. You've maxed out what you can receive. You've maxed out what you can have. You have to expand into a new territory, into a new place, and try something new and something different and not be afraid of that. If you're afraid of that, if you're afraid of moving into a new energy, if you're afraid of moving out of a relationship that's been holding you back, if you're afraid about your own judgments of moving out of something that, you know, you can't. The, the typical saying of when Mars will enter into Libra on Sunday is you're going to hear people who have always, I know plenty of Mars and Libra people, you know, they say, I can't. That's like their number one saying, I can't, whether it's in fun or in seriousness. And with the amount of energy that I see going on, this is about leaving your own fears and traps of saying you can't. That's what this is about. You know, so. So, so you know, I'm going to read some of the comments. Somebody writes, uh, but there's nothing wrong with my life except a good man would be nice. Well, if your life was exactly the way it should be right now, then it, logically the, the man should already have showed up. That's what you want. The universe is saying it's time to receive new things. Sitting in a forest, let's say, and you want water and there's no water where you're at and you're just gonna sit there and wait for the rain to come or are you gonna move yourself to a new spot, maybe one that's better that could take some waterfall water that happens to reach down in a little river or come underneath you changes where everything is asking for to receive more. It doesn't mean your whole life has to change from top to bottom, left to right. It doesn't mean that you need to freaking change your hair from blonde to brunette. It doesn't mean that you need to go get a, you know, a facelift or do anything crazy. Like this is literally about putting yourself in a position to receive what you really want in your life and actually just put yourself there. You know, like um, a good example for me, I'm launching a new app in the next couple of weeks. It's same Leo King stuff, but I'm going to have more people and we're expanding it. But that also means that th this studio has got to expand. I'm not going to be able to have it like here. So I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to go get a bigger studio, a bigger warehouse, a bigger everything. And boy, is it a risk. But you know what? It's going to put me in the position to receive more in my life because I know that I'm going to be in a position that will allow everything to grow more. You can't be a big tree in a small garden and expect to get big. The tree will sit there and not grow. It just will not. It will not grow. This is Jupiter and Scorpio. Grow through receiving more by putting out the boundaries more, expanding the boundary lines in your life. This is Uranus forcing upon you to try a new way to do your life. It doesn't mean like you have to like that your life is shit and you it, let's just keep it this way or my life's perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect life. That's a very Libra thing anyway to say, right? Is Libra is all about perfection and balance. So it's the new moon. No, we're perfect. But it's coming into a conflict. No, it may not be perfect. You might not be getting everything you want. Like the expression of that one person who said, I'm not getting the man that I want in my life. Well, then it's not perfect. Sorry to say, right? So it's forcing you to make a change. And get yourself to a place to receive that in that li in life. So I know, you know, it's not a, a it, it's, you know, Mercury in Scorpio is harsh, okay? Because it's very honest about its communication. It reveals the truth. But with Jupiter there, it's, it's realizing, holy shit, I need to expand my life. If I expand my life, I can receive more. If I choose not to expand my life, if I choose not to take a risk in my life, if I choose not to make a radical new change, if I choose to hang on the fence and sit there, then what you already have is all you'll probably sustain or you'll receive only things that are at that level. So think of life like a video game, like level one all the way to level nine or 10, like in Super Mario Brothers. Like, if you want to make it to King Kuba in the, you know, at the last thing, you've got to move to the next level. And the Uranus is about moving to higher levels in your life. 
That's why it rules the heavens. It's the stairway to heaven. There is an aspect where you, we all have to raise our life a little bit higher, a little bit better, a little bit more. And I think it's no coincidence that the Me Too campaign is happening right now because I think as society and the world, we all need to look at this situation about sexual abuse, sexual issues, not only concerning women, even though I'll, I'll be honest, I think it's more concerned about women. Sure, it's there with men too, but I'll be real. This is about women because of the fact that Mars and Venus just conjunct in Venus's debt or fall sign. Venus finally just got into Libra and it's time for the world to raise up and be more honest about these issues, be more honest about how women are treated in the workplace and in life and everything for wanting more sex out of them or sexifying them or whatever that you want to do. This is putting those issues for all of us as a consciousness to raise to a higher level right now. There's no excuse. This is not a Republican thing. This is not a Democratic thing. This is not a left wing or a right wing thing. This is a general consensus of, the, of humanity in general, which is Uranus, humanity. Uranus is not left wing and it is not right wing. People probably think Uranus is left wing. I'm sorry, it is not. You know, Uranus is all humanity in one, in one. And it's forcing it with a new moon opposition to rise to another level. So I think that what we're seeing not only in life is we all need to raise our life higher but also the world is at a place where it needs to rise itself higher. And I believe this new moon is bringing up all this stuff. And I think it's important with Mercury and Jupiter and Scorpio, especially for people to let that out. Like if that's, if that, if that's you and you ought to put up me too, then you know what? This is your moment to do it. This is your moment to, to spread that. And I think it's important for people who might not have been through those situations to support those people right now and to also help change the world so it doesn't continue to do that. When they see that in their life, they say something, they do something about it. They say, that's not cool. You know, it starts with simple stuff. It's not so complicated. And sometimes with a new moon opposing Uranus, which we're going through, we can overcomplicate things, right? We could get way too like, well, I got to do this. And especially in Libra, you know, where it's overweighing everything out and then it's opposing Uranus and then it starts to get complicated. It, 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 it makes simple situations overly complicated, this, this new moon, where it's like, no, it's pretty simple. It's pretty clear. Just look for the identification of what you want Weigh out the goods and bads, but still continue moving forward. There's way too much energy in the Zodiac right now about moving forward. Especially when you have Jupiter and Mercury, which are both forward-moving thinking planets in conjunction. You have a new moon, which is about new beginnings, new moving forward, right? And it's happening in exact opposition to Uranus, the planet of moving forward in the future. And you have it in a nice sextile with Saturn in the sign of Sagittarius, which is all about the future and positive beliefs and new roads and new circumstances. You are not going to see much more of this future aspect in astrology. I am sorry, folks. What is coming up is in that future. So... You know, I, I don't know how to describe that better, but like, like the future is now, you know, and, and changing that future is now very intensely, especially on this new moon, big time on this new moon, you know, big time on this new moon. I, you know, I put up uh, videos recently on my Facebook that I did on YouTube as well from June into August, I did those Palladian channeled and I just put up the June one where I, I knew that this would be the time where you either cross, I'm calling it crossing the river or not, you know, and in, in Oregon trail terms, it's like forge the river or not, you know, or stay stuck on the other side and not get to, you know, the promised land. I hate to use like such kind of weird analogies, but like this is a moment where, I hate to use the term fuck it, but you know, especially with sun opposing Uranus, you got to remember if we take away the new moon and we take away all that and we just look at the, the alignment of sun opposed Uranus is I can actually make my life the way I want to in my own way, in my own direction. And you benefit when you do. 
And I think that this is a moment to say, I can make my life better. I can make my life go in a better direction that I want, but I have to take that initiative, you know? Somebody asked, so how long do we have to decide the radical changes? I believe right now, this new moon window until the new moon window of uh, the sun in Scorpio or the next new moon in Scorpio is an important one. So I think that this next 30 days is make them because you got to remember as we come into the by the end of November, right? Um, things start to slow down. Mercury starts to slow down. Remember, we got a Mercury retrograde in December. <laughs> okay. Two, Mars is in Libra. Okay. It's not as strong there. Three, um, the sun and Jupiter are trying to expand things over the next couple weeks. Um, so this is a great time to do that. Even though Mars and Libra, it's like right now, make your choices, make your lists, make your things that you want to do right now. Mercury is flying forward. It's on top of Jupiter. It's ready to see the future this week. It's ready to go. This is times where you just say, you see that future, you believe in it. This is also a new moon. If you actually have looked at it, it is in a quincunx with Chiron, which is in Pisces. This is about letting go of uh, the past and past fears of things not working out, okay? Like fears of things not working out in general, okay? And getting over those weird things. They're just weird fears. They're weird little things, you know? If, if we actually... Um, look here and we take a look at so a month from now let's look at this mars is going to of course square pluto right exactly a month from today venus will be at detriment okay mars at detriment so it's not as strong you already have the mar masculine energy both in detriment which means that they're second to worst houses to be in so it's not as strong. It's not as powerful. So in my opinion, you know, the other thing that you got to look at coming up is Saturn and Mercury are going to conjunct at the end of November at the spot that Saturn went retrograde. Okay, Saturn went retrograde here at this 27 degree mark, right? The galactic center, 27, 28, wherever, how you ever want to look at it. And it's interesting that this is happening. I would say that the last call is Mercury goes retrograde at the last degree of Sagittarius on the galactic center point as Saturn is there too. And it's no irony that Mercury comes direct, okay, on December 23rd, and Saturn's already in Capricorn. It's kind of like the last call, last call. But if you look at the astrology from now, this is it. This is the moment. It's your own fears. It's your own insecurities. It's your own things deep inside of yourself that you are holding yourself back. This is the new moon about holding yourself back or moving forward. And that decision you make in yourself, it takes balls to the wall, courage and strength to do it. It's definitely not going to be easy. It seems more complicated than it really is, okay? But here it is, you know. Somebody asked what program you're using. I'm using Astro Gold on my iPad Pro. So I've got a couple announcements that I want to show people as well um, that are going on right now. So I know I've been talking about it a lot, but f my new app is coming out called Future Life, okay? So the Leo King is switching into Future Life. It's ex super exciting for me because not only are you going to continue getting the same horoscopes that I do, the daily horoscope, going to be more written stuff because there's blogs now. Also, it's a whole new website that's so much more user-friendly and more, more people will probably use the website than the app, to be honest with you. Um, but we are going to have new people, new readers, new people. The main thing that I want to show people about Future Life is it's going to have multiple sections. Of course, there's going to be horoscopes. 
So all kinds of horoscopes, whether it's horoscopes dealing with astrology or other divinations. We're going to have health and wellness videos that are going to come out with other people that do health and wellness. Love and relationships. That's a major part. Even love and lo relationship forecast uh, talks about it. Videos how to deal with your relationships better. Uh, combinations with different people that are on the app. So maybe a horoscope person will do an interview with a love and relationship person and combine them of how to do better. Or a health and wellness will combine with a love and relationship and do an interview. Uh, full lifestyle, so yoga, uh, you know, whatever you call it, um, working out, all these aspects that are going to make your life and your future better now, and then cards. I'm going to have tarot, uh, angel card readers, a lot of different people that are going to be on there, and there's going to be a lot of new things that are here on the new app. That's one look at the app. I'm, I, I'm showing just one little page to show you guys how much better, how much more. We've been putting a lot of work into this. And we are doing a casting call right now for people. But I need submissions ASAP. We're trying to go live with the app in the next. Oh, hold on. Okay, let's let's see here. Let's see if we. Are you really doing this to me right now? Okay. So. Give me one second. Hold on. It's. All right. So we put up the casting call um, Friday last week. Hold on. Shit, right here. Okay. So this is the casting call. Welcome to Future Life. Live your future now. Future Life is place. Oh my gosh, really? Um, is pleased to contact you today with regard to a possible partnership. Oh, is this really happening? I used a new cord and <laughs> anyway, go to my website. You could do it. Uh, but if you want to be part of future life, go and email Lauren at the Leo King.com. If you want to be part of future life and you want to be part of there. Okay. And we need video. So, if you have a three-minute video about yourself, this is not a website where you can hide your face. Uh, we're looking for personalities. Um, you know, I've offered it to my class first, but now I'm going more public now um, with people. And of course, if you are part of Leo King Elite, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for your submissions um, as well. Uh, so Lauren at theleoking.com. There's ways to make money through subscribers. There's ways to make money through paid videos, paid webinars through the app. It's a huge way to make money as well. So we're looking to help make people money too um, as well. So also I got to say this, my live show is coming up, which is uh, super exciting. Uh, it's here in LA and um, it literally is within the next couple weeks. Um, so get to that show. I mean, it is literally coming up here extremely quick. Um, LeoKingEvents.com. Oh my gosh, really? Is this? So here it is Rising Through the Darkness, Navigating the Next Five Years, Me and You Live, Three Days. Come to LA, get on a plane. There's super cheap flights right now from all over. I was pricing them from Canada, from all over the place. People are coming from all over. Please, if you want to join, we also have payment plans available. Three days long. It is at LAX or one day. If you're in the LA area, one day, I have a one day ticket where you can hang out at the dinner, do the, the, the full show with us, do the readings and stuff. If you want to stay through the Sunday, it's all there live at leokingevents.com. Anyway, that's what I got for you guys. Of course, on Thursday, I will be doing spiritual dance music. So we will be live with that. And um, that's all I got for you guys. So I'd love to see you guys. Submissions for Future Life. Lauren at... Leo at the Leo King.com. Let's see if I can put up that casting call one more time. Really? I have never in my life. I need to get a better brand new cord too. And that's Amazon for you guys though. All right. So. Oh no. Okay. Future life casting call. Okay. It's on my Facebook, Lauren at the Leo King.com. Get a hold of Lauren and she will help you guys out with that. 
Anyways, thanks for all the support. I truly appreciate it. Looking forward for the new app. Looking forward for all the new changes in all of our lives. And looking forward to this new moon. And I hope that this helped you with where you're at in your life right now, where you're going. I truly appreciate all the support for always being there for me and supporting me and everything that I do, uh, Leo King style and astrology style. So it means the world to me. Thanks so much. Looking forward to seeing you guys uh, you know, on the app, if you're on the app with my hunk cut, daily videos and so forth. Or... Uh, out in Los Angeles uh, for my big live show that's coming up. Hope to see you there, and I'll see you guys later. The Leo King app is the world's first and leading video and notification astrology horoscope app for iPhone, Android, and computer. Get daily spiritual videos and addictingly accurate notifications alongside weekly sun sign horoscopes, tarot videos, and exciting new age entertainment videos by celebrity astrologer and TV personality David Palmer, The Leo King. Join today. You have nothing to lose with a seven-day free trial and wake up to astrology like you've never seen before. Wake up to astrology like you've never seen before.